I now yield one minute to the distinguished gentlelady from Virginia, Ms. Luria. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I'm a Jewish American woman who served for 20 years in uniform and continue to serve in the United States Congress. At the age of 17, when I entered the United States Naval Academy, I first took the oath to support and defend the Constitution against all enemies, foreign and domestic. I subsequently repeated that oath six times at every promotion and rank, and most recently when I had the honor to become a member of Congress. Is that not enough to prove my loyalty to our nation? I deployed six times, serving in six ships in the Middle East and Western Pacific, working under challenging conditions while operating complex weapon systems, overseeing nuclear reactors, driving ships, and ultimately commanding a combat-ready unit of 400 sailors. Is that not enough to prove my loyalty to our nation? In the first three years my husband and I were married, we spent almost two years apart so that we could both serve at sea and deploy three times. Is that not enough to prove my loyalty to our nation? Am I look to look back on my military career and the sacrifices it meant for my family and remain silent in the face of people? Does the gentleman reserve? I yield the gentlelady another 30 seconds. The gentlelady has yielded an additional 30 seconds. Thank you. And remain silent in the face of people questioning my loyalty to our country. I believe that I speak clearly for all fellow Jewish, fellow Jewish veterans that this echoes of language that has been used to marginalize and persecute the Jewish people for centuries. The recent accusations of dual loyalty call into question the equal footing of Jewish members in elected office and, by extension, all Jews living in America. I'm proud to vote on this resolution in condemnation of this rhetoric. I yield my time. The gentlelady yields back. The gentleman from Georgia is recognized. <clears throat> Thank you, Mr. Speaker. And I would uh, remind, I don't think my friend from New York would question my belief that what happened at Charlottesville or anywhere else was bad. I don't think he really meant that, Mr. Speaker, because I do believe it is bad. And I think this, what is bad is having to write this bit thing seven days and having to figure this out. With that, I yield three minutes to the gentleman from New York, Mr. Zeldin. The gentleman from New York is recognized. Well, thank you, Mr. Speaker. Uh, let's all be honest with each other. Uh, we are here today, right now, because of anti-Semitic rhetoric from one member of this chamber said again and again and again. We would not be on this floor right now otherwise to discuss this topic. If that member was a Republican, that member's name would be in this resolution, and this resolution would be all about condemning anti-Semitism, and it would be done so forcefully. That member in January had to apologize for talking about a hypnosis of Israel that they have over the entire world. That member had to apologize in February by saying that if you support Israel, it must be because you're bought off by Jews. That member called it an unequivocal apology, even though she filled it with equivocation. And now we're back again, this time by saying that if you support the U.S.-Israel relationship, that you must have pledged allegiance to a foreign government. Except this time, that member is refusing to apologize. Even if you gave that member every benefit of the doubt that she had no idea what she was doing, why now wouldn't she be apologizing? Why would she be more emboldened to refuse an apology altogether? I apparently uh, am giving Rep. Omar more credit than uh, the Speaker is because I don't believe she is naive. I believe that she knows exactly what she's doing. It is an American value, by the way, to have reasonable, legitimate criticism of a government, whether it be the U.S. government, Israel, or any other government. It is not an American value, though, to be hurling anti-Semitic rhetoric. Anti-Semitism must be condemned unequivocally and emphatically. We have members of this chamber who associate with Louis Farrakhan who says, quote, Hitler was a very great man. Let's talk about a double standard. In January, we all came to this chamber. We condemned white supremacy. We named a Republican member. We kicked that member off of his committees. He can't serve on the Small Business Committee, but this member will continue to serve on the House Foreign Affairs Committee. But no, now... We can't come here and just emphatically, solely, forcefully condemn anti-Semitism and name names. But if it was a Republican, we would. It's time to call out these statements for what they are. Pointed, bigoted, unreasonable, illegitimate, anti-Semitic. I commend my colleagues on the other side of the aisle who have been speaking out about all this anti-Semitism. A few members come to mind. Chairman Engel. 
Congressman Deutsch, Congressman Nadler, Congresswoman Lowy, Congressman Gottheimer. Many of my colleagues on the other side of the aisle, I believe to their core, know how very wrong this is, and there are many other members to name as well. And I'd be remiss if I didn't take this opportunity to say thank you to each and every one of them, because support of Israel, support of Jews, standing against anti-Semitism, has been bipartisan in the past. It should be bipartisan today, and should be bipartisan for every moment in the future. I yield back. And from New Jersey is recognized. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. As a Jewish member of Congress who lost family in the Holocaust and whose grandfather fought the Nazis, I need no reminder about our responsibility to confront bigotry, hatred, and intolerance wherever it is found. No matter how hard one tries, the allegation of dual loyalty simply does not constitute a legitimate opinion about foreign policy. It's a slur against Jews, it's indefensible, and it's deserving of the condemnation by everyone, every time. More than anything, it's offensive to question my loyalty or anyone's loyalty to the United States of America here, simply because I'm Jewish. The same way it was appalling to question President John Kennedy's loyalty to the United States because he was Catholic. I'm glad that Congress is voicing its opposition to anti-Semitism and made it clear that dual loyalty smear is unacceptable. Unfortunately, it was also clear from the discussions this week and the ultimate resolution that treating anti-Semitism anti is being treated differently Jim than other forms of bigotry expired. and hatred. There shouldn't be an asterisk next to anti-Semitism, and I'll continue to fight Jim's it. Time has Thank you. How much time do I have, Mr. Collins? Have the gentleman from New York has four and one quarter minutes. How much do I have? The gentleman from Georgia has four minutes remaining. I reserve. The gentleman reserves. The gentleman from New York, Mr. Nadler. Mr. Speaker, I now yield. I now yield 45 seconds to the distinguished gentlelady from Florida, Ms. Wasserman Schultz. Gentlelady from Florida is recognized. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. One thing we are all reminded of this week is that words have power, and divisive words cause pain. Every Jewish person in America, no matter where they are from, could share a story of deeply painful anti-Semitism that they have personally experienced. For me, at its worst, Nazi-obsessed internet trolls mercilessly taunted my children with Holocaust threats too vile for me to describe on this floor. And this pain is frequently felt by all too many Americans. How you look or speak, who you love, or where you live and pray can still invite unwanted and potentially dangerous words of hostility. The conversation today about anti-Semitism, allegiance, and loyalty is necessary because remaining silent against hatred and bigotry is not an option. I'm a second-generation American on both sides of my family. Two generations later, it was possible for me to become a member of the U.S. Congress, only in America. So questioning my allegiance is painful and personal. Unfortunately, this dual loyalty question is not isolated to Jews. Words have power. We must carefully General choose our words and make expired. sure that we use them to unite us and not to divide us. I yield back. Remarkably, Mr. President, for the second time in just the last three weeks, Speaker Pelosi apparently feels compelled to have her members vote on a resolution that would reportedly condemn anti-Semitism. A resolution that will purportedly condemn anti-Semitism. Unfortunately, again, for the second time in just the last three weeks, this seems to be in response to the invocation of crude, hateful, and backward anti-Semitic stereotypes by one specific freshman member of the House Democratic majority. This Democratic Congresswoman already stoked controversy in mid-February, having publicly proclaimed that Israel supporters are only in it for the money. Apparently, she believes the only reason leaders would stand with the Jewish people and the state of Israel is Jewish money. Well, I think we've all heard that kind of talk before, and we must not tolerate it. During my time in the Senate, I've had the honor of traveling all over America. I know I speak for colleagues on both sides of the aisle when I say that support for the state of Israel and the U.S.-Israel relationship is deeply felt, deeply felt all across America. Our relationship is built on common values and democratic principles our shared interests, close partnerships, and deep friendships. The support for Israel that you see in this chapter, in this chamber, is not the work of some shadow conspiracy. The members of this body support Israel because so many Americans support Israel. 
I had hoped this regrettable episode might have caused this lawmaker to be more careful with her language. But alas, just a few weeks later, here we are again. More anti-Semitic tropes. This time she claims that supporters of Israel have actually, quote, an allegiance to a foreign country. That's the old, ugly, dual loyalty smear, Mr. President, plain as day. We should also not overlook that in a few cases, these anti-Semitic statements have provoked offensive anti-Muslim comments and response. That is hateful and completely inexcusable as well. So now the House of Representatives seeks to distance itself from this member's remarks and will apparently soon vote to condemn anti-Semitism for the second time in just a few weeks. Well, I hope this time the message is clear. Support for Israel isn't about the Benjamins. It's about the hearts and minds of the American people. And it's unconscionable for any member of the United States Congress, even less a member of the House Foreign Relations Committee, to repeatedly traffic in base stereotypes.